Hi everyone, welcome back to BDI's vlog series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about salaries. Obviously, integral part to move to the UK, you need to figure out what you're going to be making so you can work out where you're going to live and what you're going to spend on. If you're watching this video in a year or two years time, the numbers that we're talking about and the scales that we're talking about may not be relevant to you. Uh, and in the same way, if you already have friends who are working in the UK, they may be on salaries or pay scales that won't be accessible to you when you arrive or, or the same as what you've been offered. Um, now, as far as the junior doctor contract goes, um, that is going to be probably the biggest area of change uh, in the last, well, certainly for the time that we've been functioning in medical recruitment. Um, every year there are slight amendments to the pay scale to account for uh, either pay rises given out by the Department of Health and the government uh, or to account for inflation rates as well. Um, there are uh, kind of core hours based into junior doctorate contracts, uh, but you will also get supplementary uplifts. Um, in the old contracts, they tended to come in the form of banding. Um, now that's a phrase that you may hear thrown around, so there's different types. There's 1A at 50%, 1B at 40%. You'll find all the different banding varieties on the BMA website, and they break down what percentage uplifts you get. And basically what that means is that they're rewarding you for additional on-call work or uh, out-of-hours work so what they would call anti-social hours hours that are after 6 p.m. or before 8 a.m. in the morning or done over weekends or bank holidays now uh, to give you an example of how banding uh, might work and again bear in mind that this may not be applicable to you um, if you were on a 50% banding which generally you would have in a specialty where you're doing lots of on-calls or out-of-hour work so uh, maybe you're in critical care emergency medicine uh, something that has uh, lots of on-call uh, involved in the job plan and um, your 50% uplift comes as a calculation which is based on your salary. So if your basic salary, just as an example, is £40,000 covering your core hours, but you're doing lots of on-call that buy you a 1A 50% uplift, they're going to take 50% of your basic salary and they're going to add it on top of the basic salary. So that 40%, sorry, that £40,000 salary becomes a £60,000 salary. Um, and that's what's known as your OTE, your on-target earnings for across the year. Now, different contracts have different uplifts, different supplements. So if you are going to be working as a junior doctor, uh, generally anything that isn't on the specialty doctor, um, specialist or consultant level pay scales, you're going to want a full breakdown of exactly what your rota looks like. Uh, and what supplementary uplifts you can expect. Okay, so following on from the junior doctor contract, um, you're looking at specialty doctor, which is actually part of the junior doctor contract, really confusingly, but it's a different pay scale, which is reserved for kind of more senior doctors who are working below a consultant level, um, but who are not on that sort of more junior rota. Now, the specialty doctor contract uh, is again based around a core of 40 hours a week, uh, or what we would call 10 PAs, programmed activities. Now, a PA, a programmed activity, uh, is four hours in duration. So one day, uh, in a specialty doctor contract, might be made up of two PAs, four hours in the morning and four hours in the afternoon. Uh, and when you look at your rota for the first time uh, and you're working on a 10 PA contract, it might say outpatient clinic AM on Monday, uh, admin time PM on Monday, um, you know, CPD protected time Tuesday AM, ward round Tuesday PM. Um, so generally it's broken down into those increments. Um, your salary will be determined by the number of years of experience that you have in a particular specialty. So where the junior doctor contract, some of those doctors uh, might not have specific number of years of, of experience in them. Uh, specialty doctor, you need to have at least four years experience within a specialty to be eligible for the specialty doctor contract. Um, now, we can help support you with that if you want to get in touch with us at bdrresourcing.com. Uh, we can help you give a rough idea of where you should be on the specialty doctor pay scale. Um, but really, uh, what you want to do is work out primarily, if you get a job offer, the number of PAs that you'll be doing. So if you're doing 11 or 12 PAs, that means that your basic salary will increase um, and it will be based on the value of an individual PA. So a 10 PA contract that's worth £50,000, you would divide that by 10 and that gives you the value of each PA. So an 11 PA contract would be £55,000 because an additional PA is worth £5,000 each. Um, so, you know, that can be a bit more confusing. Do get in touch and let us know if you have any questions, but ultimately that's roughly how the specialty doctor pay scale works.
Okay, so arguably the easiest pay scale to make calculations on is the consultant pay scale. Uh, that's called a, a YC pay scale, that's the, the pay code number. Um, again, this is based on your numbers, uh, number of years of experience as a consultant within your specialty. So where is it a specialty doctor contract um, anybody calculating salary would usually look at your experience within the specialty after your internship or your um, your kind of junior doctor training, so residency or tra specialist training upwards. Consultant salaries are based solely on your years of consultant experience or equivalent. Um, and again, they work in a kind of uh, an annual order where every year of experience is awarded an additional point on the pay scale uh, and you work up that annually. So, um, you know, it's, it should be pretty clear every offer that you get within the NHS should have the same salary. There can be different interpretations of the middle grades and junior doctor contracts, but the, the consultant one is pretty straightforward. Okay, so um, it's worth noting that every hospital might have a slightly different interpretation of the pay scales, but if you are looking for a better idea of what you might be able to make in the NHS, do please get in touch with us and one of our specialist recruiters can have a look at your CV and give you an advice with at least a pay bracket of what you might be able to expect. It can be quite a um, quite confusing topic, there's a lot of different pay scales out there, there's a lot of jargon and a lot of different words, so let us have a look and, and let us help you. Um, we hope to see you at some more of the BDI vlogs. Uh, have a look at our other uh, blogs, our podcasts, our vlogs that are on our website, and we'll see you for the next one. Thank you.